So this question is very conceptual, which I don't love. Um, I get why this is the, the last one in this section, supposedly the hardest question. Um, it could also take you two seconds. Um, let me just cut to the chase here. The answer is B. And you have to understand kind of what these, like, what the difference between these graphs is, right? It's, it's kind of obvious in a sense what the difference is, right? You can look at them and you can see that data set A and data set B are basically the same. They're the same overall shape. The heights of the boxes are the same. The only difference is that B is, if we took A and just moved it over one notch, I guess, right? All the boxes are moved one over. So how would that affect, in this case, the mean, right? That's what the they're asking. And they want the smallest possible difference between the mean of A and the mean of B. Now, if we had actual values, we could just kind of calculate it. We know the formula for mean, we could put in them in, add the sums, divide by the number of numbers, and, and calculate it and kind of see. We, though, would then not be able to get asked, like, what's the smallest possible, right? If we had specific data points, then there would be no uncertainty. The means would be a certain specific number, and we would just subtract and there would be that difference and whatever it is, is the answer. The reason they can get away with this kind of uncertainty though, is that the data is not presented to us as formal points. It is kind of in these like, what are called like buckets, right? It's in these little ranges. So let me just read this part and, and I'll highlight it. So we've got these two data sets of 23 integers, so same number of data points. Um, for each of the histograms, the first interval represents the frequency of integers greater than or equal to 10, but less than 20. And then they kind of repeat this uh, along the line. So let's just be very clear about what that means. So this first interval here, right, in both graphs, represents the values that are between 10 and 19. Um, they say integers, so that's that we have that going for us. It's not 19.9, but I guess it could be in another different version of the question. So 10 to 19, right? And then the next chunk here, in which they do label, would be um, the numbers 20 to 29, right? Greater than or equal to 20, uh, but less than 30. So you have to think, okay, if we need to shift this graph, and we want it to shift the smallest amount possible, right? Because if we're moving everything by the same amount, then the mean is gonna kind of change in a very predictable, uh, easy way. So if, if all of the numbers, oh my gosh, okay. If all the numbers here in this leftmost bucket were 20, right? That would fit our um, descriptions, right? So in the green, I say it's that's 20 to 29. So the lowest that that could be would be 20. If we then just subtracted one from it, it would suddenly appear in the, the other chunk, the other grouping. So here, right, it would be 19, but now it's in that spot. It's only a difference of one, even though these two ranges are cover 10 numbers, right? The, the difference between the lowest in one range and the highest in the next is just one. So that's all we're doing. It, it, the lowest possible situation is if we took, if, <laughs> if all the numbers in each column were the minimum in their set, right? So all the numbers in that first column are 20, then all the numbers here are 30, and then 40, and then 50, right? So that's, that's the minimum that each one could be and still be in that spot. If we just subtracted one from every single one of those, then we would just shift the whole thing, right? Now, the first grouping is 19, and then these are 29s, these are 39s, and these are 49s. And now we actually could, if we wanted to, now that we've kind of given these points specific values, we could calculate the mean for each set and actually see that, yes, the difference is one. But you really don't want to have to do that for this kind of question. This is very conceptual, which I don't love. I, I hate that on the SAT, but sometimes you got to do it. And here's a case where I do think you just got to kind of conceptually understand this because question 22, you probably don't have a lot of time left anyway. So it's a really like 
very quickly see what's going on. But hopefully I have explained how these kind of like categories work, how these boxes work, so that if you see this again, you're able to be like, okay, the change has to be the minimum amount or, or I need to think about what would be like the edges, right? So that's the key. It's the edge of these little chunks that matters because if we move just a little bit, we completely change what we have uh, according to the graph, but the number itself is kind of, hasn't changed very much at all. Um, I hope that helps. I'm sorry if that's still confusing. Um, like I said, this is supposed to be the hardest question. You're not gonna have a lot of time. This is not a high priority question for most people. There are, are way better things earlier in this section that are easier, that are strategies, uh, that our strategies will help with. Um, and so make sure that when you're doing this hard module, you are still thinking about maximizing points. And that may mean leaving some things kind of on the table or just taking a good guess um, very quickly, but not necessarily having uh, an infinite amount of time for everything. You got to place your bets where you're most likely to get the points and questions that involve strategies are way better than something like this that's just conceptual.